Welcome to Love Always Self. I'm Shira. Hey y'all, I'm Karista and thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Love Always Self. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw a little uh little thing over at Michael. He's awesome. <laughs> and he always starts his calls off with Woo-hoo! <laughs> and it's so exciting. You're like, yeah, now I'm pumped to watch this, you know? <laughs> so this morning or today, whenever you're listening uh, to this, we just wanted to chat with you about some of the ways that we connect with ourselves to receive guidance. So we have shared in the past that we believe that we have everything we need within us, including uh, the ability to have inner guidance. It's just How do we connect with that? How do we start learning about that within ourselves? How do we start trusting uh, the information that we're receiving? And so today we wanted to share a few of the modalities that we have used in the past to start developing that relationship with ourselves and that inner awareness. So Shira, you want to get us started today? Yeah. So man, I've, I've learned so many um, different modalities. I think I've literally just kind of tapped my, you know, foot into Mm -hmm. all the different woo woo tricks that are potentially out there. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. Jack of all trades, master of none. Right. Right. (laughs) right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so when I am learning or when I started learning how to just tap into some of these different abilities that we all have, Mm -hmm. Um, and just learn how to utilize modalities because, you know, for us, we, we like these like tangible physical things because we're in a physical experience, right? So just having these little like things that we can hold on to or, uh, you know, and, and of course as humans, we like our evidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, um, so just having some of these little different items or whatever that we're using to assist us, um, into learning how to use those inner guidance. Right. And so we'll be linking all of these products Mm -hmm. below. If you have any interest in checking them out. Correct. Correct. Um, and and no, we don't get any kickback for these. So these are just (laughs) our little tools. Um, so I learned this more recent one. I have to talk about this one first, just because it's so cool. Um, It's super easy and anybody can like do right. it without buying anything. Yes. Right. Well, well, you might have to buy something, but <laughs> that's up to you. It depends on what you got in your house. Um, so this new one that I learned recently, uh, is a third eye activation. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, and I don't even think I've told you about this one yet. Yeah. I was thinking of a completely different one at first. So you, oh. <laughs> yeah, share. <laughs> <laughs> Going in. Um, so this, uh, I learned this from, uh, Gigi Young. And, um, if you don't know who that is, uh, man, she shares a lot of information and it's all for free and you just find her on YouTube. Um, just search Gigi Young. Um, So she taught this, uh, little trick and I've been practicing it and wow, I mean, it's pretty incredible. So let me tell you what it is. Um, first you want to, uh, reduce your physical senses. Um, and one of the ways to do that is to use headphones. Um, you know, if you have noise canceling headphones, um, If you don't, you know, just try the next one that I'm about to offer. Um, So using my headphones and the noise canceling feature on it. And then I also use a eye mask that you can open your eyes in. So they make these really cool Mm. masks that have the eyeball area like cut out where it's not touching your face, but you can't, you know, it's still blocked. Mm -hmm. Um, But you can open your eyes. And so, but You want to make sure that your mask has no light visibility whatsoever. So one of the masks I found, I actually got two different ones. One's downstairs. I didn't bring it up here to show you guys, but um, again, we'll link it below. But, um, and that one is a bit more for like, it's comfortability. It's a bit more expensive. It's, you know, it's really soft. And um, I, but if you don't put it on right, you can still kind of see the light around Mm -hmm. your bridge of your nose. Um, now this one I'm about to show you, if you're watching this on YouTube, 
um, is called the Mindfold. I think that's hilarious that it's named that. The Mindfold mask, and it feels... It's really light. It feels really, really cheap. I'm not going to lie. It they, looks like styrofoam glued to a piece it, of plastic. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it's got this um, styrofoam <laughs> or like really soft kind of, you know, really squishy uh, uh -huh. foam material. But as you can see, um, again, if you're watching this and it's not audible, it has the eye area cut out so you can open your eyes fully while you're wearing this mask. Um and, but this one, I'm not going to lie. This is the cheapest one. Uh, it wasn't expensive at all. It was just a couple of bucks, I think. And um, and it works. Like, I can't see anything wearing this whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, but by doing this uh, trick, you're removing your physical senses. So if you're... Uh, working on activating your third eye a bit more um, or really like enhancing the abilities that are in that pineal gland, mm -hmm. um, which is also referred to as a third eye. Um, it really does. Uh, you start to kind of see um, it's like mental images, but it, it just, it seems to enhance it more uh, kind of like remote viewing would work where mm -hmm. you're, you're getting more of that, uh, sensation of sight, but without seeing, I, I know that that sounds a little strange, but internal visuals, internal visuals. Right. Right. Um, you ever close your eyes when you're sleeping at night, but you close <laughs> <No>. your, <laughs> <laughs> I never close my eyes at night when I'm sleeping. <laughs> you're right. Let me rephrase that. So <laughs> you, uh, we had a long night last night, so, um, okay. Um, so whenever you go to bed at night and the first time you lay down and all the lights are off in your room or whatever, and you close your eyes, you almost get that sensation that you can still make out mm -hmm. the edges in your room, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a dresser or a, a nightstand or a doorway or whatever, you kind of can still, uh, visually see that a little bit, but even though your eyes are closed, that's that's the same thing. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Right. Gotcha. It's like you get more of that type of a feeling when you're starting to practice this particular, uh, way to do it. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and I definitely think everyone should try this. <laughs> it's just one of my new favorite <laughs> ones. So yeah, so that's, uh, one of the ones that I do. Um, and that's more recent practice. Uh, I don't know. What, what are some, what are ones that you do? Uh, I think starting early on, it was really easy to move into using like tarot decks mm. or maybe not the, the Rider Waith tarot deck. That one was very difficult for me to understand. It was just a lot of information and, and things just didn't make um, sense as easily. Like it's not just, it's just not registering. So using the, my favorite one or the one that I've used the longest is my energy Oracle deck, uh, by Sandra Ann Taylor. That's a pretty one. And I, you know, just shuffle. I sit there shuffle for however long I feel called to shuffle. And as soon as I stop, I'll, you know, receive how many cards so I'll ask, is it just one? Is it three? Is it four? And whatever comes into my mind, that's what I draw. And sometimes I just sit there and I'll, you know, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle until things pop out and whatever pops out, I'll sit there and look at the, the image. So this one, was at the top of my deck here. And this is one of the archangels the, for the solar plexus, which is the, I think, third, third chakra. chakra. And this just allows me to maybe bring some more attention or awareness to this. Now I'm just shuffling without having an intention at this moment in time, but I will utilize a question or think about a certain situation that I am wanting some guidance on. So, you know, should I do this or should I do that today? And I'll just shuffle and, and receive whatever pops out. And it's about evaluating what that means to you. So these do come with, um, booklets and 
little booklets that explain the meaning behind each card. And you can use that if that is what you feel called to do, but you don't always have to use that to feel into what the message might be in this moment for you. Uh, so that's one of the, the things that I've done more frequently in the past few years. And of course I have expanded my tarot <laughs> deck collection as well, or my <laughs> Oracle deck collection, but I have uh, Oracle of the fairies. Ooh, pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, by Karen K and a moonology Oracle deck. Oh, that's a, that's a popular one too. Mm -hmm. Um, I like that one. This one, I, I'm still working on getting to know it, uh, but it's not the energies of the planetary bodies are impacting us, whether we're aware of it or not. And just because the moon cycle may, may be in a specific placement today, whatever you pull, that doesn't mean that it doesn't, uh, isn't connected or there isn't a message for you behind the meaning of whatever phase you pull. Um, then the last one that I most recently got is the earth warriors Oracle deck. And this one's by Elena Fairchild. I love this one. This one is so cool. It's so detailed. There's so much information. Yes. I have been using the, uh, guide because <laughs> it, I don't really understand it without it. I'm still working on, uh, integrating and incorporating and assessing what the information is behind each card, but it's just fascinating. It's beautiful, beautiful deck. So those are the tarot cards that I use most regularly. Nice. You know, um, something to say before I go into some of the decks that I have, um, the, one of the inner knowings that you start to tap into has a lot to do with trusting your inner knowing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you start to build a relationship with your inner knowing. Um, and that's one of the best practices when using or starting to learn how to use tarot, um, mm -hmm. is that it really does start to bring about the trust, uh, within yourself and w the information that you're receiving. And then as you develop that trust, Mm -hmm. The information, which some out there refer to as downloads, it really just starts to come to you yeah. and you just say or write down what's coming to you. And then mm -hmm. when you, uh, especially if you're journaling that information or if you record it or whatever, cause I'm not big on writing. So sometimes I'll just take my phone and while I'm doing this shuffle, I'll record myself. And then about a week or two later, I'll go back and listen to it. And I realize how much of the information that I had said in that recording really aligned with what happened over the course mm -hmm. of those next few weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and, and that, you know, using something like that, whether you're writing it down or recording yourself or whatever, um, allows you to bring about that, uh, that physical, uh, uh, discernment, I guess, you know, like mm -hmm. it, it gives you this uh, tangible thing that allows you to have that evidence that we humans really need and, you know, and like to have. Yeah. Um, it, it's well, validating, I think is the word I was right. trying to find. Yeah. Basically through, through these modalities, we're working on our connection with our body. You know, we, we've talked about in the past, uh, in other episodes about uh, connecting with your body and the importance of that. This is just another way to do that. So even if you don't feel aligned with the shuffling, uh, and the drawing, uh, of a, of a card, one thing that I do like to try sometimes is like spread out the deck and just let my hands mm, yeah. glide over and I'll have my eyes closed. And I'm just trying to connect to see if I feel anything different in my fingertips when I'm above certain cards Ooh, and that's use really, that as a guide. That's really tapping into, um, physical sensations. Cause your body does tell you a lot of things mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. all day, every day. It's just um, in a whisper. Yeah. So sometimes it's really loud, <laughs> you know, like your stomach growling when you're hungry. Um, mm -hmm. but then sometimes <laughs> it's like very, very gentle, like she said, like a whisper. Um, mm -hmm. and so tapping or just bringing your awareness to it, 
um kind of like doing a scan you know like if you Mm -hmm. if you were like in one of those like sci-fi movie machines that it's like scanning your body or like a mission impossible machine or something i don't know and and you're like star trek (laughs) star trek yeah Yeah. um and like and like you just kind of scan your body start you know with the top or start you know with your toes or whatever whichever direction it doesn't matter and like and just do a do a scan and just kind of get a sense of like how everything feels um and then start asking questions so like one of the one of the tools that we talked about before um was asking yes or no questions um Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know ask questions that you know the answers to so you know what that sensation feels like um i recommend doing the scanning of your body first so you get kind of like the baseline Mm -hmm. um and then you know start asking the question so like if i said something like you know uh body what do i like cheesecake you know and you'll want to when you before you start asking questions Mm -hmm. you'll want to talk to your body about okay give me a you know if it's a yes I want to feel it in my left hand. If it's a no, I want to feel it in my right hand. And then you say, Hey body, give me a yes. And you wait for that feeling. And then you say, Hey body, give me a no. And you wait for that feeling just so you're making a connection, uh, to begin with in that baseline state as well. Yeah, that's a good one. That's actually a really good practice to, to learn as well. I didn't do it that way. I actually just said, do I like cheesecake? And then I waited, Mm -hmm. I, I felt you know, I just kind of tuned in and was like, where am I feeling anything? Gotcha. Yeah, and so both ways. And it just so happened to be a finger on one of my hands that just slightly tingled. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and then I asked myself a question I knew the answer was no to. And I was expecting it to just be a different finger on the same hand. But then I felt it in my other hand. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, snap. And then I just kind of kept playing with that because it was so exciting that I was learning this, you know. And every single time, if the answer was no, it was the exact same finger on the exact same hand. If the answer was yes, it was. I mean, mm-hmm. and sometimes it might not be your hand, you know, but like Carrie said, you can direct it too because mm-hmm. it is your body. Mm-hmm. So And, you know, if you, because we like data, because we like proof, a lot of dietitians, registered dietitians use this modality called muscle testing when it comes to food and what's right for their body, a person, you know, an individual's body and very similar. It's just, we're stepping outside of the realm of just food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do like that test too. Like sometimes when I don't know what I need, um, or I'm not attuned to knowing what I need, mm-hmm. I'll ask my body, what do you need? And then I listen to the very first thought. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, again, it usually says water, but <laughs> I'm just terrible at this. <laughs> um, <laughs> the water that is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, another one that you shared with me recently was writing, you know, the yes, mm-hmm. no on paper. Yes. So just taking yes. a little sheet of paper, breaking it up into five different small pieces of paper, writing two yeses, writing two no's and one undecided or rephrase or unknown, or maybe whatever of the words that you want to choose. And then you can take a hat or, you know, put it in your hand and shuffle it around, obviously not looking at it and ask your question. And now you have your answer. Yeah, that was a cool one. I learned that one from Elizabeth April. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, you know, I have to say this: when we are discovering things, a lot of a lot of stuff comes to us in weird ways, right? Um, whether we just pop a question in our head and you Google it, or maybe you start to seek. Uh, you know, different teachers of these practices. Um, you know, like on YouTube or Instagram or whatever. So there's certain teachers that I follow um, and I'll watch their information. I'm not always like a hundred percent, you know, because I use my own discernment when I'm receiving information and I decide on what I want to receive and what I don't. Right. So, um, so I just want to put that out there when you go and start searching for teachers, just use your discernment. (laughs) Um, But, and just because we agree with one thing, doesn't mean we agree with everything. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And and that might be the same for those that are listening to us. You know, it's literally thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> You might, you might be like, oh my gosh, this modality that they're sharing with us is, yeah, I love that one. That sounds great. Yeah. I'm going to try that. Or you'd be like, mm, no, I don't want, I don't have anything to do with that one. You know? Yeah. Use your discernment. So totally fine. Um, on the yes, no thing, mm-hmm. you know, using a pendulum. So I have this moonstone pendulum That's pretty. with a, uh, amethyst stone in it. I honestly don't know where. Oh, no, I got it for Christmas. So I I did receive this as a gift. And this can be used as well with the yes or no. You may have a, uh, let's see. I've got this little fabric board. This is really detailed. Oh, look at that. I've never seen that. This can be a bit overwhelming for me, uh, especially if it's Swinging all over the to determine, yeah, where exactly it's where are you going? (laughs) So, as an alternate, you can write your own and just do a circle, have yes, no, maybe undecided. You know, that's really wow. You drew that circle. I'm sorry, I have to comment on this. My handwriting is terrible. That was very clear and a very good circle. (laughs) Mine would have looked like a a jacked up pizza. And, and with these pendulums, you know, there, there is sometimes this worry that we're controlling it consciously, Mm -hmm. which yes, you can. Sure. Absolutely. But you can also begin to build trust that you're not just moving it on your own because you can also use like a little stand to set it over the circle. And it's, it's, still being impacted by your energies. Yeah, it is. If you need to build that trust that you're not physically moving it yourself, like swinging it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you know, that, that's definitely manipula- manipulating it, but like, <laughs> so I'll just hold it to where it's not sliding and I'll just rest it and I'll just let it pick its position, its, its direction. And you can even get, um, the stands for it. So you're not holding it right. physically with your hand and it right. still works, which is just freaky when you first do it. <laughs> and you're like, yes, this is so cool. <laughs> you actually gave me, uh, my first pendulum as a gift. I love this thing. It's so pretty and it's with amethyst, um, which is my favorite crystal. Um, so I'll just, and it's got like gold on it and it's encasing. It's just so pretty. And I love that it has a moon charm. Cause I saw the charm on yours. Um, uh, and it looks like a dream. Oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, I didn't even see that when I gave that to you. Um, <laughs> and yeah. And it's got these like really, really pretty, uh, stone works in the chain. So I love this one. Um, I have it in my meditation space. All the time. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, one of them that I want you to share with us is repeated numbers. Oh, this is a favorite. So I talked to my spirit team, what we call Mount Glass, um, that we acronymed, of course. Um, and if this is your first time watching this or listening to us, um, Mount Glass is masters, teachers, guides, loved ones, angels, self for hire and source. Um, which some people refer to as God. So that is our way of, you know, I experience them usually in their own unique personalities, but I also, I always experience them as a collective. I get them, I get the sense that they, they all team up and communicate with me, but one just shows its dominance in that conversation a little bit Mm -hmm. more, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So anyway, so we call them Mount Glass. So when I'm playing around with Mount Glass and, I want answers to certain things or I just want to know how, you know, like sometimes I'll just say, are you guys still around? Cause they're always around, but like, sometimes I just need that. And I'll be like, um, show me numbers, show me threes mm-hmm. or show me fours. Or sometimes I'll say, show me threes and fours. Um, or I'll pick a different number or whatever. And then throughout the entire day, if you're, opening your awareness to it, 
they will send you number synchronicities. So, or just synchronicities in general, because you can do this with, even if it's not numbers, you can do this with mm-hmm. like whatever else, right? Like birds. Red, red birds. That's mm-hmm. always a good one. <laughs> that's been years lately. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I actually recently asked for threes and fours and I'm at work and like we get these, um, well, I'm not going to go into detail about that, but like I get this like stuff that comes in for me and it's numbered, it's got a sequence on it or whatever. And all of a sudden I'd never seen this before, but one just had fours going all the way across. And I was like, oh, dang, <laughs> you know, or like, um, or like I'll bring my awareness to something that I'm doing or like maybe I'll get a text message. And then I look at my phone and like the, all the red badge marks all on my phone for notifications, it had like a bunch of threes like all Mm. over it. Um, Or somebody will, you know, send me a message in Instagram or whatever. And I go to pick up my phone because it made a ding noise and it was 444 PM, you know, like they, that's how they will start to send you messages, but it's just opening your awareness to that Mm -hmm. on to receive it. Right. Another neat trick when using number synchronicity is you can just ask your team because they're not going to mess with your free will. So asking is the best way to communicate with them. So they understand that you're cool with interacting. Right. So it's like giving permission in a way. Right. Right. Um, so sometimes I'll say, Hey guides, I'll give you full permission to assist me with dot, 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 uh, for today. Or I would like to receive some guidance on dot, 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 you know, today. Um, and when I ask those types of questions and I noticed the number synchronicity, um, I, I take a pause and I just listen to the thoughts that I'm receiving or mm-hmm. that I'm having. Mm-hmm. And usually the answers are within there or, yes. or something will pop up on my Instagram feed. And it's literally the answer to the question that I was just asking. And you're just like, what? <laughs> and it's still <laughs> shocking. Even though I know this and, and it's been and, and we still question every once in a while, right? right? <laughs> we do. Because we are human. <laughs> but it's exciting because you're like, when we say you're never alone, well, I'm not freaking kidding. <laughs> so, you are always connected. Yes. A hundred percent. Now, um, one last thing, Shira, would you share with us your decks? Yes, I will. <laughs> looking for a uh, transcriber to say all of this down below so all the whip your decks out <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. we are adults i swear um and I, you know i just want to say like little nugget make sure you're like playful with this stuff. Like this is all about fun. It's not like we can use it for serious stuff, but bring that playful vibe and, and have fun with it. Yeah. It's, it's just not like a game, but it, it can be, it can be, it can be for sure. Yeah. It can be a game. Um, so I would say that my first, my very first, um, I actually don't usually use tarot because like you Carrie, I, it's yeah, a lot. I just keep referring to it as tarot, but it, yeah, yeah it's a lot of information. Um, so the first time I got my, I, I ever bought a tarot deck, um, I got the light sears tarot, uh, and guidebook by Chris Ann. And so I'll show that on my screen. Mm -hmm. Um, and usually when picking these out, even if you're buying them online, um, which my very first tarot deck was online purchase because of the Dimmick. And so I couldn't get it in a store. And like, I honestly, like there was something about the artwork and the Mm -hmm. diversity in the images that I really loved. Um, and so that was what draw drew me to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and usually that's how you pick your, your, your card decks out is what's, what are you connecting to? What do you, yeah. what do you feel aligned to? Right. Um, I always think it's super cute that yours are very like fairy. Cause I, yeah. I, <laughs> I so feel fairy energy with you anyway. So, um, if you look at the guidebook and I always do recommend that if this is your first time, right. Mm-hmm. That maybe get one with the guidebook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they usually come with one, but 
It was, or they're downloadable. Mm -hmm. Or they're downloadable. Yeah. But it was really helpful. Um, and you can see how many tabs I have oh, like nice. <laughs> saved on mine, you know, so I could flip to pages super fast. Um, but yeah, this one is very much a tarot deck. It's a, it's got more of the, it's a 78 card one, actually. Um, hence a little overwhelming. <laughs> hence a little overwhelming. Right. Um, and I do like this, the size of this one, um, because of how it's easier to shuffle because it's smaller in size. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as the cards go, they're still way bigger than your like average. Yeah, you're 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 got two decks in your hand. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so... well, I was even... basically double I decking mean... right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> I almost snorted. <laughs> we could do this all day. All day. <laughs> um, uh, it's it's Please still continue. <laughs> I don't even know how to say it now without actually thinking this. So, <laughs> so like, carefully. <laughs> carefully. Carefully. Um you two, please don't <laughs> kill us on the <laughs> <laughs> not captions okay um so <laughs> this one is still smaller <laughs> in the hands than some of the other oracle ones and um again the imagery and here i'll just show you one. Ooh, pretty yeah. yeah it's not really focusing very well but that's okay um so it's just really really pretty artwork so that's one of the first that I owned and used the most. Um, Shira, do you clear your decks or do anything before you start using your decks? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> and Carrie's lost it. So <laughs> I'm glad there's two hosts on today. I know, right? <laughs> so first and foremost, I do. Um, and this is just a modality that I like to have when I'm doing this um, because this is what allows me to feel more connected with them. Um, so I will either smudge them with mm -hmm. sage or Palo Santo. I prefer Palo, Palo Santo. I just like the way it smells better. Um, it's also known for uh, not wiping out <laughs> your energy, but rather transmuting it into something lighter. Um, mm -hmm. so I'll take a Palo Santo stick and, you know, I'll, I'll light it and just let it, you know, smoke and then I'll smudge the deck. And then while I'm doing that, I'm thinking, cause I'm setting my intention towards mm -hmm. clearing anything that was previously connected to it with the manufacturer or the shipping or whatever, um, and allowing it to just fully connect to me mm -hmm. and my guides and my spirit team and my Mount Glass, right? Um, and, and then I ask my Mount Glass, I say, Mount Glass, please utilize these cards to communicate with me and send me any messages that, um, I need to know for my highest good, mm -hmm. always only for my highest good. Okay. So that's my first one. The second one I got is the psychic tarot Oracle deck. I'm a pref, I prefer Oracle decks. I, I love them. So uh, so I'll show you that one. This one's kind of shiny. So sorry about the glare. It's a John Holland, um, 65 card deck and guidebook. And this one is slippery. <laughs> it's very shiny. I can't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Choose your words wisely, Shire. I am refraining. <laughs> So, um, so I, I probably used this one the most, um, and I still to this day use this one the most. So if you are on our Patreon, this is the one that I normally use when, uh, sending our three card deck pull for the collective. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but I'm, I'm going to switch it up a little bit later anyway. Um, so you can see this one has like 
kind of more of that shiny feel to it. You can get the glare a little bit more, but that's why I'm saying it's like, it's just a, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I will spare you. So there's that one. Um, my third one is one of my favorites. I even made a TikTok video on it, but I can't believe that my favorite series ever created, which is Supernatural, in case you guys didn't know. Um, and they have their own tarot deck and guidebook. And so uh, when I discovered this, I, I scared my poor husband and I was like, Stephen, we need to talk. You have to sit down. We need to talk. And he sat down and he was super nervous. You could tell. And I go, I found a supernatural tarot deck. <laughs> and he just looked at me like, are you kidding? <laughs> and I was like, I am not kidding. It's amazing. I cannot believe they have this. Anyway. So my, my last but certainly not least um, is the Kyle Gray, the Angel Guide Oracle. Um, and this is a 44 card deck and, and book. Mm -hmm. um the imagery in these are just incredible mm -hmm. um so again we'll link all of these down below um and while i'm mentioning it don't forget to like if you like this and if you're aligning to it give it a thumbs up subscribe if you're watching this on youtube or follow us from all of our amazing podcast channels okay <laughs> helpless plug Awesome. So wrapping up, we have everything we need within us. It's how do you want to practice receiving it? How do you want to receive your validation? How do you want to start connecting with yourself? There's no wrong way other than avoiding it maybe, or not, not trying, but that's not really wrong either. If you're choosing that that's totally fine too. Yeah. So, but again, be playful with it. Have fun. Our guides want us to be experiencing joy and love and, yeah. you know, ease in life, if that is meant for us. And, you know, it's, it's about raising our vibration and we do that through having fun and laughing and being silly. And they're here to support us along our path. And so are we. Yeah. So, I hope you found something new in this information that you want to try out and just play with today. And, you know, let us know how that goes. We would love to hear from you guys. So uh, anyways, yes. yeah, on to the next. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here today. Hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day and don't forget to love first, love last. And love always. <laughs> Bye, Bye y'all. Hey, listener. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us in this moment. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and we look forward to our next connection. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow to stay notified of new content from Love Always Self. If you have any questions or topics you'd like for us to discuss, please hit us up on any of our social media platforms linked in the show notes below. I'm Karista. And I'm Shira. And until next time, remember to love first, love last, and love always. Love Always Self podcast is meant for entertainment purposes only. We do not make any warranties about the completeness, reliability, and accuracy of the information presented in this podcast. Any action you choose to take upon the information in this podcast is strictly done so at your own risk, and we will not be held liable for any losses and damages in connection with the use of our podcast. Any and all medical concerns should be addressed with a licensed healthcare provider, as well as any questions that may be derived from the information discussed in this podcast.